Welcome! This week on Millennium 7 Star we are talking about the KFX Borama A, the new Korean fighter that was just presented. Required permit to talk, sir. What is it? I'm recording. Program change detected, sir. Yes, of course I did it. What's the matter with that? Video 1134 has been replaced with 1136, sir. Uh, Otis, a lot of people are actually curious about the KFX, so I suppose 1134 can wait. Schedule changes cause resource misallocation, sir. Otis, we are here to explain non-obvious stuff to the viewers, but the viewers must be interested. Change may happen. This is such a human point of view, sir. <sighs> Let's roll the intro. It looks like the F-22 had a baby. This joke was reported in the comments many times right after the presentation of the KFX prototype to the world. And indeed, despite the fact that the two planes are very different, they look remarkably alike. In this video, rather than quoting Wikipedia, we won't go through the usual number, which are actually declared numbers, which may or may not be accurate, and they haven't been demonstrated yet, we will try to answer a question. How difficult is to build a modern combat jet? South Korea is an advanced country with a well-developed industrial base and a prime position in the world technology stage. I myself, I had several Samsung products. Yet the KFX story is mostly about acquiring the pieces of technology that Korea was lacking. In the early 2010, the planes debate revolved around if it was the case to acquire these technologies or trying to develop them indigenously. The Korean decision was that trying to develop this technology in-house and also developing an entirely uh, indigenous plane was going to be of strategic interest for uh, the nation and the industrial base. This was expected to have an important and positive effect on the Korean industrial base and indeed this is happening like it happens with many large in military industrial projects. However, the point remained, Korea lacked many of the technologies required to make the KFX an improvement over the F-16. The key one is propulsion. We have seen in a previous video how difficult it is to develop the key technologies required for a modern military jet engine. In fact, the Hanwha Shebol will build a version of the General Electric F-414 engine. It is not clear whether the critical testing and blade technologies are going to be transferred to Korea or no. In 2014, the KFX program tried to acquire some key F-35 technologies from Lockheed Martin, but the US government blocked part of the deal. Some of those technologies were considered too precious to be shared. The F-35 AISA radar was among the technologies blocked. So Hanwha is developing an indigenous version with the help of the Israeli Altas for the hardware and the help of Saab for the uh, software for uh, signal processing and management. Uh, yes, because the AISA design principles are well known, but the actual practical technology is a very valuable technology, difficult to acquire. It is quite telling that Korea he is already producing a ESA radar for naval use, but apparently they didn't have the technology to, to build the, the smaller and lighter modules that are required for uh, aeronautical use. In terms of performances, the radar is expected to be roughly equivalent to the American APG-80. Another block technology by the USA was the infrared search and track. So Hanwha is working on a customized version of the Italian Skyward, which is the uh, Erst mounted on the Gripen EF. The Ersts are probably a bit simpler than Raiders, but they too feature some technologies that are difficult to develop from scratch, particularly when it comes to the sensors 
and the signal processing. On the contrary, an area where the Koreans did not need any particular help was electronic warfare. The Korean company Lignex-1 is actually developing the electronic warfare suite starting from the ALQ-200K, which is a Korean electronic warfare pod that is already equipping Korean F-16. To be fair, Korea tried to acquire F-35 uh, radio jamming technology, but this was another part of the deal that was blocked, uh, but apparently the Koreans are not particularly concerned about that. And finally, there's stealth. The plane includes some radar uh, signature reducing features, but it is not properly stealth. However, the Korean ambition is to improve the aircraft and the planned Block 2 is expected to actually include proper stealth. And to be honest, the Korean approach looks uh, rather sensible. The structural part of stealth, which would require a radical redesign to be implemented, well, it has been implemented already, while more advanced features have been left for a future version. The KFX development is another window after the Indian Tejas on the problems that you may encounter if you want to develop a modern combat jet without a well-developed industrial base. I am sort of tempted to rank the critical technologies in order of complexity and difficulty of development. Mm, okay, I will do it. The most accessible technology is the general configuration, design, and the aerodynamics associated with it. It is impossible to hide what is already in plain view, and today with computational fluid dynamics, aerodynamics can be simulated quite easily. Also, wind tunnels are within reach for many organizations. In the same way, structural design is an accessible technology. It is still possible today to design a metal structure with classical methodologies that you can learn in a book and still obtain a workable result. Composite materials are more complex, but they are also used in many other industries, so they are not out of reach for a moderately developed industrial base. On a classic inherently stable aircraft, uh, systems and auxiliaries are only marginally more complicated and they can be derived from the civilian market. At the end of the day, there are applications of standard engineering that you learn at university, so no mysteries there. At this stage, if you add a jet engine to the mix, and more on this later, you have enough to build a trainer or a light attack aircraft. Actually, to build a light attack aircraft, you also have to integrate weapons. Cannons are precision mechanics and um, they are usually acquired as a separate unit from an independent manufacturer. They are a technology that is relatively easy to reverse engineer because they are electromechanical devices. The metallurgy may not be readily available, but it can definitely be derived from other industries. Unguided weapons, like bombs or rockets, are more complex. The aiming system in this case is not a problem, but the structural loads and vibration associated with the release of the weapons are. For example, a thin and flexible wing will vibrate while releasing the first bomb or the first rocket, uh, thus compromising the precision of the second one. So in this case, the complexity of the structural design is up another notch. If the plane is designed with relaxed ability, then fly-by-wire hardware and software is another notch up the scale of complexity. Lot of notches in this video. The hardware cannot be derived from the civilian market and the software required a less cruciatingly long uh, testing and tuning. The software in particular requires competencies that are a bit beyond the classical flight mechanics and it must be totally safe, absolutely bulletproof, because a failure almost invariably lead to the loss of the aircraft. However, you get into the first division when it comes to sensors. Combat jet radars are different from any other kind of radar. They have wildly different functioning modes. Features like IFF and Massint 
unknown to the civilian market. They must be light, reliable, energy efficient and uh, surprising. I mean, surprising for the opponent who shouldn't be able to easily characterize the electronic signature of the rider, which is the first step to defeat it. And the same is true for electronic warfare suits, and the same is true to a slightly lesser extent for infrared sensors. All these technologies are very complex, and they are all characterized by a high level of secrecy. They are very challenging to be developed autonomously if you don't already have a capable industrial base. Guided weapons increase the complexity even more because the integration of guided weapons with the platform requires this integration of different systems. Systems and weapons must talk to each other and obviously when you start doing that you may want to integrate all the other systems because there are obvious benefits in integrating communications, data links, flight computers, all in a single network of systems. And if you go down this route, which is the route that has been taken by every modern fighter designed from the 80s onwards, well, the complexity goes up not one but two notches. Today, sensors, weapons, and electronic systems are by far the most complex, expensive and time-consuming element of a modern jet design. Save for the engine. As we have seen in a previous video, propulsion is the top of complexity. The key technologies to build an engine are the testing technology to debug a new engine and technology to build the turbine blades. These technologies are among the best preserved industrial secrets in the aerospace world. They are in the hands of half a dozen of manufacturers and they carefully guard them. So, if building a trainer or a light attack aircraft with foreign engine and weapons is within the reach of many countries in the world with a relatively modest industrial base. If Building a Generation 4 fighter, again acquiring the engine and a good part of the more specialized system from foreign vendors is within reach of developing or industrialized countries like Pakistan, Sweden, Taiwan, Korea, Japan, Brazil, Italy and so on. Only four countries in the world can build autonomously a fifth or a sixth generation fighter. The United States, Russia, France, and the United Kingdom. Germany combining forces with Italy and Spain could arguably come close. And China is joining the group, but is still not quite there. So stay tuned because we are going to follow closely the KFX project and when there will be more information available, we are going to extend the coverage. As usual, we will do that trying to telling you stuff that is not easy to find anywhere else on YouTube. So, if you like this video, and I suppose you did because you got this part, you are going to love the videos that are going to appear beside me. And anyway, please like, dislike, subscribe, or hit the bell so you won't miss anything. If you could join the growing number of the Patreon and subscribe star supporting the channel, you will have my gratitude forever. And anyway, thank you so much for watching. You have no idea how I appreciate that and see you in the next video.